Hey guys, it's Lydia here, and today I'm going to be reviewing this awesome Creality LD002R Resin DLP 3D Printer. So, let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back. So, Creality very kindly sent me this awesome, their awesome DLP Resin 3D Printer. Now, as you can see, this thing is super, very, very aesthetic. Like, you can, it looks really nice. And I've been printing with it for a couple days now, and it's just super awesome. And um, I'm super excited to show you guys how it works. So let's get right into this review, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so starting off with the unboxing, it's just a simple box, and um, there's just a lot of stuff that comes in it. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But the packaging is super nice. It's super padded, and as you can see, there's some bubble wrap. And also inside, the packaging keeps everything together and completely snug and safe for shipping. All right, so starting off, we have our machine here. I'm sorry if you can hear a little bit of buzzing in the background. My anti-cubic photon is actually printing right now. But here is our machine. Now this thing is very, very pretty. Just looking at it, it I just love the color. The orange looks great. It's super clean and it just has a really nice look to it. So the first thing I want to mention what comes with it is your power cord. And then this is actually the build plate. This is was in the top of the foam. And then we have, I believe these are extra um, FEP sheets, FEP clear sheets that you put for your vat if in case um, it tears or something. I don't know how many are in here. I believe there is one. I'm guessing there's one, but I'm not sure. We'll just figure that out when we actually need to replace it. And then we have a big bag of goodies here. Now we can open this up and what I can already see is a manual, user manual. In here, we also have a USB stick uh, or USB drive that we use to put the STL or the model onto the printer to print it. And then we have two spatulas. We have one metal. This actually has a really nice handle grip to it. And then we have one that we see in most um, resin printer kits is just this plastic spatula, which also you can take prints off, off the build plate with. And then we have a couple bags of rubber gloves just some white rubber gloves. We also have a mask. Now, I don't really use a mask when I use a resin printer because the resins I use don't really have that bad of smell to them, so I don't really use these, but because of coronavirus, maybe I could use this out when I go shopping. We also have a uh, brush. Now, I'm not really sure what this is for. Maybe to clean off the resin, extra resin with rubbing alcohol after um, printing it, maybe post-processing. And we also have our tools that we need to um, fix it or to also replace the FEP film. And then we have some of these filters for our resin. So once you uh, print with your resin, when you put it back into the bottle, you want to actually filter it and make sure that there's no um, cured resin that is left over in the vat. And that is just um, to make sure that nothing clogs up your next print so that's it that's in here and so now I'm going to open it up and we can plug it in and start it up all right so now you guys can see I switched things around a little bit and um, I have it plugged in and everything and so I'm going to press the on button and as you can see it's turning on it took a couple seconds to turn on but then it beeps to let you know that it is on now this actually interface is very similar to the Anacuic Photon right next to it. Um, and it's super clean, super sleek, because it actually looks a little bit better than the Photon. So I'm going to take the top off here. And I believe this thing is already pre-leveled, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools, and then I'm going to go to Manual and move the Z-axis up. It is very, very silent compared to the Anacuic Photon when it moves up and down. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit so that I can actually slide this on. So I believe this is actually the same size as the Anacubic Photon. Um, and it's just a small build plate. Once again, normal resin printer, small build plate. Not like those giant ones that you can purchase. This is again, a budget 3D printer. So what you actually do, some people are actually really confused about this, is you unscrew that and you just slide it on and then you tighten it down and that is actually how you do it you don't have to take that out all the way you just unscrew it a little bit slide it in and then screw it back down so i do again believe that this is 
already flattened, but one thing we have to do is unscrew these knobs. I do think you have to unscrew these all the way. So this is a little bit different than what I've seen before. You actually have to unscrew it all the way. And then um, there's actually a uh, little plastic screen here that you have to take off. And um, one nice thing is this, that actually sits in a little channel. It actually is a cutout for it, so it fits specifically for it. And I'm actually just gonna wipe this down a little bit. There's some dust on it. As you probably could hear that, that means it is super tight and it is actually ready for printing. So I'm gonna put this back in here into its channel. And then I can screw it down again. And so there is our printer. Now again, this is super sleek, super nice. I really like how it's open, unlike the Anacubic as it's enclosed and everything. Besides when you put the top back on it, I just like how there's a lot of area to work here and it is just nice and clean. Now you wanna keep this sticker on. I mean, you can take it off, but just says keep, keep the screen clean. So if you actually um, get a hole in your VAT um, FEP, then it will actually leak out and get underneath onto your LCD screen and it will harden on there like your um, print will harden on there. And so when you take off your um, that, you're gonna actually have to scrape it off to clean it off. So that's what that means. Uh, but that will be for another video if I have that problem. So I'm not 100% sure if this printer is pre-leveled. So just to make sure, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen these up. And I'm going to check if it is level. So I'm actually going to get a piece of paper and for right now I'm going to go back on the LCD screen and I'm going to go to home. And then it's gonna lower down and then we can use a piece of paper to check if it is level. So as you can hear it beeps when it hits the bottom and I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit and slide my piece of paper into there and bring it down again. Um, I'm gonna bring it up just a little. All right, so as you guys can see, um, when I when it was pushed down all the way, I could actually not move this around, but once I brought it up a little bit um, by 0 0.1 millimeters, as you can see, this moves over here, but it does not move over here. So that means it's not perfectly level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our tools out and we are going to uh, loosen the screws on the sides up here and level it up. Level it out. All right, so as you can see, it's now a little bit wiggly, so I'm gonna loosen them just a little bit more, and then we're gonna lower it down once again. Okay, until it beeps and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold it down here just so it is even and then I'm going to tighten these back up so now I'm going to go up a little bit until I can move it but not uh, push it back in so I'll be able to pull it up and not push it back in so I'm going to have to go up and down a little bit just to get it right and once again, I'm on the 0.1 millimeter setting. So that is correct. So now what I'm gonna wanna do, is I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna show you guys down here. And so once your bed is actually level, what you wanna do is you wanna go back and you wanna go to set zero and then confirm that. And now what I just did is now set to Z height. So now I'm gonna go back, go back to tools and then we're gonna move it up 10 millimeters so we can put the vat back in there. So once there's enough room, I'm gonna put the vat right in there. Once again, in its grooves, and then find the spots to start screwing them back in. There we go, now the vat is in there, and now it is actually ready to print. So I'm going to pour in some of my Syra Tech 
uh, fast gray resin. Now, as you can see over here, I have some Cyrotech blue. This is the engineering blue and then my clear anti-cubic resin. Now, you can use whatever resin you want for this machine. This is a DLP 3D resin printer. So you want to make sure that you have a 405 NM resin. Now, the Cyrotech is that, so I'm going to be using this. And I will be doing reviews on all three of these resins soon enough on this channel. Um, but I'm just going to start the print for this machine. Now, I'm not going to slice a specific uh, model for this machine because I do believe that a model pre-slice already comes on here. Now the software that I use for slicing is Chichu Box. As you guys might know if you watched my Anycubic Photon review, I actually did show you guys uh, what slicer to use and that's the slicer I will be using for this in the future. But right now there should be a pre-slice file on this SD uh, USB stick. So what I'm going to do is go over to print and then in a, there's just a bunch of folders here. What you're gonna go to is the model one, and there is two models. So there's one that uses support, um, and then there's an Eiffel Tower. So I'm gonna print that one. But what I'm gonna do first is go up and raise the Z axis just a little bit so I can show you guys how to fill this vat. Up. As you can see here, there are little steps on this vat. And it's really awesome because in the manual, it will tell you what each step means. Um, basically, what it means is how much resin you will be putting in there. So if you need a print that has a lot of resin, you can uh, know how much you need to put in there by those steps. And I'll put on there uh, what each of them means. But other than that, now we can uh, pour our resin in there and get started with the print. All right, so the print is done. Um, it was about a seven hour, maybe eight hour print, and it printed overnight, which um, sometimes people might be scared of letting their brand new printer print overnight, but I have had lots of testing with these printers, so it did just fine. And so we just take off the top here. And as you can see, our model has printed. Now, before you touch anything, you wanna make sure you put some rubber gloves on. Now, I just have these clear rubber gloves. Make sure you have a lot of rubber gloves when you have a resin 3D printer because you want to make sure you wear rubber gloves all the time just because things can get really messy and sticky. So I'm going to bring my um, tub of rubbing alcohol over here and then we're going to take the model off with a spatula and scrape it into our uh, container. So because it did print overnight, uh, it was sitting for a long time. So there's not a lot of resin on the build plate, but usually when a print is finished, there's quite a lot of resin still. So you want to make sure that is all dripped off. And now we'll just take the lid off. Now I am making a cure station for um, my printers, um, but right now I'm just going to use this bath of rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to use this spatula and scrape off it's actually way easier to do it on a table first and then just transfer it in there all right so as you guys can see i kind of had a little bit of a hard time getting that off um but as you can see here this is the model so i'm going to clean it up with some pinchers and just clean the bottom up and then i'll put it in the rubbing alcohol so now it is ready to be washed. So while our print is in the rubbing alcohol bag, what you want to do to get ready for the next print is just get some paper towel, use your IPA, your rubbing alcohol, and clean off your build plate here. You want to clean off top and bottom just because it is super, super sticky because, again, the resin got all over it. and it's super easy. I know there's a lot of stuff that you can actually coat your top here with so that no resin sticks to it, which would be really cool, but for now, you can just clean it off with some IPA. Super easy, just once again, make sure you have gloves on because things get really sticky. So you can let your um, print sit in the rubbing alcohol for as long as you want. Some people do 10 minutes, some people do five, not even a minute. Just to wash off all the old resin. 
And honestly, I think it's pretty good at where, it, where it's at right now. This thing has so much detail to it. I even scaled it down to 70% scale. And it just looks great. As you can see here. Now this was printed with Chichu Box Slicer at 0.06 millimeter layer height. Um, and it is just super, super nice. The resin came out really nicely. I actually did slice my own. Um, I was going to use their sliced, pre-sliced model, but I decided just to do mine so that I could get the settings and stuff all ready for this resin to use. Once again, this was the Cyrotech uh, Gray Fast Resin. I did purchase that myself off of Amazon. It was about $35 for a thousand grams, which is really nice. Um, and again, this thing just looks fantastic. Now there actually was um, a line, as you can see, kind of in there, it's floating. I'm not really sure what that was from. It's all the way around. Maybe it was just the model. But other than that, this thing is super fine detail. And just looks great. So let's do a couple more prints and then finish off this review. Alright guys, so as I mentioned, the resin that I used was Cyrotex, uh Gray Fast Resin. Uh, and this is like the ABS-like resin. And actually, these prints turn out phenomenal. So the first print that I did, as I mentioned, was this... Um, Eiffel Tower and again it turned out phenomenal and it just looks great the detail is very very high quality and for the size of it this thing would have been terrible on a normal FDM printer so the next thing I printed was this Millennium Falcon now this thing actually took 10 hours to print now I don't really know if I had the settings correct for the fast resin that I was using because you're supposed to print it faster than you normally would with other resins but this thing is completely solid I probably should have hollowed it out and uh, put some holes in there for resin to come out. But this thing really turned out great. And I'm gonna show you guys some close-ups here. Uh, as you can see, there's just so much detail and it just looks great. And again, it took 10 hours to do and um, it was printed just like this. And as you can kind of see, there are some white, uh, white marks on there. Now, I don't really know what that's from. It could be some resin now i did rinse this in my ipa or rubbing alcohol and then i cured it but i didn't really know what um was causing that so i actually did print another one as you can see here um i didn't print it because of the white stuff i just printed it because i'm gonna be gifting it to somebody else and i want to keep one for myself but again it took 10 hours but i just let it print overnight and this thing is very very quiet uh, you might be able to hear, it might just be the fan, but it's super quiet once it's printing, so you don't even know it's on. But again, the quality is just great, and you can't even tell the difference from these two. It's just printed really, really nicely. And now, I do have one other print uh, printing. And as you can see, this thing uh, came out really, really fine in detail, and it just looks super nice overall. But I really didn't need to print any more prints besides these ones because I really just wanted to show you guys the detail and how easy this printer actually is to use, especially for a beginner like me. Uh, the only other resin printer I have is the Anticubic uh, Photon. As you guys know, I reviewed that also. But this thing was super easy. I plugged it in. I just flattened the bed or leveled the bed out. And then I put resin in it, pressed print, and that was it. It was just super easy to do and super user friendly. Um, so that is all I have for today for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you liked my prints that I printed and you learned something new about uh, this DLP resin printer. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments. As you guys know, if you are um, not new to this channel, you know that I like to comment back and let you guys know uh, and answer your questions when you have them. And we are super close to 4,000 subscribers. And if we are, we have not hit it um, by the time this video comes out, we are super, super close to getting there. So thank you to everybody who has contributed to subscribing to my channel. We are growing, not as fast, but we are growing. And I really enjoy having each and every one of you here and watching my videos. Again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments. And I hope to see you in the next video.